Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of the Sydney International EV Auto Show, Australia's largest electric vehicle event of the year. My name is Tom Gann. I'm the founder of YouTube channel Ludicrous Speed, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be your host for this exciting three-day celebration of all things electric. Now, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather, the Gadigal clan of the Eora Nation. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, recognizing their enduring connection to this land. This event showcases the biggest collection of electric vehicles under one roof in Australia, giving you the unique opportunity to explore and compare a wide range of models. We're incredibly grateful to our exhibitors, including prominent brands like Toyota, Xpeng, Audi, Tesla, Ford, Kia, Zika, Photon, Subaru, Peugeot, Depow, Hankook, GWM, Smart, Cherry, Segway, Cupra, and many more. A special thanks also goes to our energy partners, AGL and BP Pulse, for facilitating the shift to electric energy and making EV ownership even more accessible. We also appreciate the support of Cars Guide, the New South Wales Government, and the Australian Electric Vehicle Association New South Wales branch for their assistance in shaping the program for this event. As part of this experience, all visitors have the chance to register for a free test drive of an electric vehicle. If you haven't done so yet, please make your way to the test drive desk downstairs in the car park and seize the opportunity to try out the exciting new EV models on display. The live stage program right here is the heart of our event, providing valuable insights into the practical aspects of transi transitioning to electric vehicles and exploring the future of the EV sector. Our expert speakers are here to share their knowledge and answer your questions. We encourage you to share your experiences online and on social media throughout the weekend. We've got wall to wall insights from all experts and also others in the EV community. Now we all know how important government is in sh embracing change for EVs. Uh, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first speaker today to open the show. We've got the Minister for Climate Change and Energy of Australia, Mr. Chris Bowen. Uh, Mr. Bowen entered Parliament in 2004 and has held a wide variety of portfolios, including serving as Treasurer, Minister for Human Services, Minister for Immigration and Minister for Small Businesses. He is currently the Minister for Climate Change and Energy, and he is very passionate about advancing EV adoption in Australia. On behalf of Future Drive Auto, uh, we'd like to thank Mr. Bowen for his support and I'd like to welcome him to the stage. Mr. Chris Bowen, everyone. Uh, good morning. Thanks for uh, being here this morning. Um, as you might see, I've had a couple of health challenges over the last 48 hours, uh, but I was very uh, keen to join you today. It's a very important event, a very important exhibition uh, with uh, many great exhibitors and it was important that I come and share a few thoughts with you. Uh, some climate change deniers would say, look at Bowen, he's even more dopey than usual, he's doped up on painkillers and at this point this point, they would have a point, uh, but uh, nevertheless uh, it's great to be here and great to share with such great companies and such great enthusiasm from the EV community in the transformation that we have uh, underway in Australia. I want to Acknowledge the fact that this is the land of the Gadigal people and pay my respects to them and also acknowledge that our energy transformation is an opportunity to work with them to break down Indigenous disadvantage in our country by ensuring they share in the wealth that we're creating in this renewable energy transformation. The other opportunity we have in our renewable energy transformation is to ensure that households uh, are in charge of the resources that they have available to them on their roof, in their garage, in the, in the battery in the garage, and increasingly in the battery that sits in their driveway. Uh, the battery that sits in their driveway uh, will, in almost all circumstances, be much more powerful than the battery that's in their garage. And we've got to ensure that all those resources are working not just for the grid and for the country, but for the consumers or increasingly what we call prosumers, people who are producing and consuming at the same time, producing energy and consuming energy. And we are making good progress uh, on that. And EVs are right at the heart of that as well. A couple of months ago uh, in our regular meeting of state and territory energy ministers with me, we agreed what we call the consumer energy roadmap, a pathway to ensure that consumers are in charge of the resources that they have increasingly. 
And very important uh, in that roadmap is the role of electrics, electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles. Uh, and I'm very pleased to announce today that one of the important milestones in that consumer energy roadmap has been ticked. And that Standards Australia has ticked off the new standard that will allow vehicle to grid charging in Australia. Um, thank you. Thank you to the people applauding that there. Now what that means, for those of you who are applauding, you probably already know what it means, but what that means is that uh, no longer will charging be a one-way street. Uh, that you can charge when you want to charge and you can discharge back to your house or to the grid when that suits you. Uh, obviously, you'll be looking at energy prices, you might want to set it up so it happens all automatically. It's really putting consumers in charge. And the process from now is that those manufacturers that enable vehicle to grid charging uh, and those charging companies that enable it can register their products with the Clean Energy Council uh, and get approval for each particular product. They'll have to meet the standard that's been ticked off by Standards Australia. But where we've got manufacturers and uh, OEMs who are on board for that, and it all happens smoothly, we'll be able to have bi-directional charging a reality by Christmas uh, this year. Uh, so I really am encouraging manufacturers, both of vehicles and of charging infrastructure, to get their act together and get uh, their applications into the Clean Energy Council. I'm sure they will, they've been waiting for this uh, as quickly as possible so we can make it a reality. It's not gonna happen overnight for everyone, not every manufacturer is at the same place, uh, but uh, it is now going to be enabled in our system. So it's a really, really important step forward. A couple of other announcements I'm making today. There's a lot of uh, very impressive light vehicles around uh, and that's very important. That's why we introduced our new vehicle efficiency standards through the parliament. As you know, most of you, Australia and Russia were the only two countries in the world, only two major economies in the world without vehicle efficiency standards. So we have been very much a dumping ground uh, for non-efficient vehicles, for vehicles which use far too much petrol and diesel. We fixed that, uh, got it through the parliament, it wasn't easy, but it's done, and it will start on the 1st of January. And that, uh, that though applies to light vehicles only, to cars, to utes, uh, and to light commercials. It's not the right answer for heavy vehicles. And uh, we have a lot of work to do to decarbonise heavy vehicle transport in Australia. It's difficult, uh, but it's gotta be done. And there are good options uh, for heavy vehicle transportation, whether they be battery swaps or hydrogen. Uh, there are good options, but a long way to go. So today I'm also announcing that we're making $100 million available for heavy vehicle decarbonisation through ARENA, our renewable energy uh, agency. So companies uh, and others can apply for innovative charging, for new technologies, uh, for rollout of uh, heavy vehicle decarbonisation and that uh, is also available now as well. And the third thing I'm announcing today is support for two particular companies, uh, Linfox and Toll. Uh, we are providing uh, Linfox $19.6 million to help them roll out 26 battery electric trucks across their distribution centres in Queensland, South Australia and Victoria. And we're providing Toll with $9 million to deploy 28 battery electric trucks uh, and supporting infrastructure at their 10 sites across Australia. We've already done quite a bit with both of those companies, um, but we're doing more uh, because them decarbonising their fleets is good for them, reduces their running costs, and importantly, it's very good for their drivers. I've not yet met a driver of a heavy vehicle who switched to electric who says they want to go back. They're easier to drive, better to drive, quieter to drive, cleaner to drive, and a more pleasurable driving experience. So it's very good uh, uh, for workplace harmony and happiness. Uh, for these companies, but it's also in our national interest. So therefore we partner with these companies to get the job done. So it's a good day. Vehicle to grid charging, uh, now ticked, enabled under the law of the land and uh, will become a reality before Christmas uh, in the real world. Possible today, technically possible today, thanks to these changes, but uh, next couple of months, an opportunity for the companies to get their registrations in and get it happening. Secondly, partnering with companies to decarbonise heavy vehicle transport and uh, also partnering with those uh, people who want to involve, be involved in heavy vehicle decarbonisation with a $100 million funding round through ARENA. So thanks for coming out today. I'm, I hope you've uh, had your interest peaked in some of the beautiful models we see around. I've been checking them out uh, and uh, looking at what's coming in the market, what's available in the market now and what's coming in the market over the next 12 months and there's great exciting options and that's even that's just going to get better. 
with the new vehicle efficiency standards uh, that are in place from the 1st of January. We're seeing more and more affordable options. People say EVs are too expensive. That's because we haven't required the affordable options to be sent to Australia. People say EVs aren't and hybrids aren't suitable for utes. Well, the BYD model for 60,000 went on sale two weeks ago. They've sold about 2,500 so far. Uh, so people do uh, respond very positively when they see these models coming online. And uh, we've got a long way to go to catch up with the rest of the world. We've started very late on this journey uh, and we've got a long way to go, but we're catching up as rapidly as we can. And that's in no small part to government policy, but in no small part to cooperation with industry and to people who are participating in the EV journey. Great to see you today. I